Hey group, how you doing? So we've spent the last few weeks talking about reptiles. Um, and this week we're going to start transitioning into birds. Um, your activity for this week though, is going to kind of tie together reptiles and birds and one of their shared characteristics. But first to review some of our characteristics of birds, I have an assistant. Um, this little skeleton is um, a pigeon. Um, so if we look at this guy, we can see some of those common bird characteristics on our pigeon. Um, one being that birds have beaks. So we see that. Um, we also know that birds are covered with feathers. Feathers do not guarantee or ensure flight, but they are helpful um, if birds do fly. But even if they are flightless birds, those feathers help to um, provide insulation to the bird. Um, we also know that birds have wings and wings are just modified arms. And in fact, if you know anything about your own arm bones, you know that we have a single upper arm bone, the humerus. We have two lower arm bones, the radius and the ulna. We have a bunch of irregular wrist bones and finger bones. And birds actually have kind of the same thing. Um, if we look carefully at our bird, birds have a single upper arm bone, a humerus. They have a radius and ulna. They have wrist bones, and then they have, there's a little thumb, and finger bones. Now, they don't have five fingers like we do. Um, they are modified to better support wings, but they're there. Those homologous structures that we've talked about before. Um, we also know that birds have a very lightweight skeleton. Even some of the largest birds, like a, like a bald eagle, which if you've ever seen one of those up close, they're huge. Um, they don't weigh that much. They're, they're pretty lightweight. So little small birds, we could weigh them in ounces. Um, one of the ways that their skeletons stay lightweight is that their bones are hollow. Um, so they're not dense and solid like bones of other animals often are. And they have um, some other unique bone structures like we know the wishbone right here. Um, those are their clavicles. Those are the, the collar bones here. They're fused together. Um, we also see at the base of the tail, their little vertebrae are fused together, that's pega style, that helps to support um, the tail feathers. We also see, if you can imagine, if you've, you know, carved a turkey or a chicken before, you know, you carve the meat <clears throat> off of this large bone, that is their sternum. Our sternum is very flat. Um, theirs is keel shaped, and that provides a really large surface area for the attachment of those flight muscles. So we see those. Um, other characteristics that are not visible on our bird skeleton um, are, of course, the feathers. We mentioned those, that they have an endothermic metabolism, so they're able to internally generate their body heat. And birds run very hot, about 104 to 106 degrees um, on average. And they also have a really unique respiratory system. So they have lungs, but they also have air sacs um, inside of their um, chest cavity that helps store extra oxygen and shift oxygen around. Um, whether they're inhaling or exhaling, they always have oxygen rich um, air in their lungs. So that's pretty, pretty cool. Um, one of the last things then is we know that birds are oviparous, which is a fancy way of saying that they lay eggs and they lay eggs that have shells on them. Um, and this is a characteristic we saw with reptiles too. So the next thing we're going to do is take a little closer look at what makes those types of eggs special and how they're different from, say, fish or amphibian eggs. Hey, group. Okay, part two here. So we have a picture here of an amniotic egg. This is a type of egg that is only found in reptiles, birds and our egg-laying mammals like the echidna and the duck-billed platypus. What makes these kinds of eggs different is that they are watertight. Um, so they don't need to be laid in the water like a fish egg or a frog egg or a salamander egg. So they have a, either um, a hard or a leathery shell on them that creates a self-contained moist environment for that embryo to develop. Um, so if we look at the kind of important parts of this egg. Um, we see our little embryo here in the middle. Um, and there's kind of four big important pieces to an amniotic egg. Um, one of those is the amnion. And that's this little membrane here that surrounds the embryo and is filled with a fluid that the embryo floats in. Um, you've probably heard of 
an amniotic sac in humans. Um, when you hear about a woman's water breaking, um, that is this membrane that's breaking open just before the baby is ready to be delivered, and then that fluid comes out. So even in reptiles and birds, they have that little amnion, that little membrane that surrounds the embryo. Um, second important part is this big thing right here, that's the yolk sac, and the yolk is the food supply for the developing embryo. So as the baby gets bigger, um, the yolk sac will get smaller. Um, there's the allantois, and that is this big structure here that goes right into the belly of the embryo. Um, the allantois is responsible for collecting and storing nitrogenous waste from the baby. Um, in mammals, this would equate to the umbilical cord. Your umbilical cord is where you get your nutrients and um, exchange your waste products and, and get oxygen and all that kind of stuff through there. So that's what the allantois is doing in this little embryo. And then surrounding the whole outside um, is a membrane called the chorion. Um, and that's gonna kind of contain all of this stuff together. And again, in mammals, the chorion is what ends up developing into the placenta, which is what connects the embryo to the mother um, against the wall of the uterus. So. We see all those parts. Other things going on here, um, this fluid that's around the outside is the albumin, which is fancy a fancy word for egg whites. So those are the egg whites there. And we might also notice that there is an airspace here. Um, and that airspace actually forms initially shortly after the egg is laid. Remember I said that eggs, or pardon me, birds have a really high body temperature. So when that egg comes out of the bird, it's at about 105 degrees. It's nice and toasty. And you know, when things cool, they contract. So um, the membranes tend to, it kind of peels away from the edge um, of the eggshell as that egg cools down a little bit. And then as the embryo continues to develop or the chick or the little reptile or whatever it is continues to develop, um, there's gas being exchanged across the um, eggshell through little tiny pores. Um, there's moisture that's being lost during development. Um, and so that airspace actually does usually get larger um, the closer the baby gets to hatching. So those are some of the, the key parts of the egg. Now let's take a look at a real one. Okay, we're back with an egg. Um, this egg came from one of our chickens, so we're going to take a look at it. We're going to look at the outside and then break it open and look at the inside. Um, so on the outside, there's not a whole lot to see. This is our shell. It's a nice hard shell, um, so it's going to hold all that moisture in. Um, and even though we can't see them um, without a microscope, there are little tiny microscopic holes, little pores within that eggshell um, that are going to allow for gas exchange and water um, to come out of that shell. So let's break this guy open. And I'm going to try really hard not to break the yolk. All right. Now, the first thing I want to point out, though, before I get rid of this shell, is you can probably see um, this is the wide end of the shell, and we can see that airspace down there. Um, and in fact, when the little um, chicks start to hatch, they will often puncture that first, and that'll be their first gulp of air, um, will be from that little, little air sac right down there in the end. Um, and we can also sometimes see part of that shell membrane um, against the inside um, of the shell. Oh, there's some. You can see that really well. Some of that quarry on there. Okay, so let's see what, what we've got. And of course, it's probably not going to have landed the way I wanted it to, but, but we'll take a look. So all this gelatinous stuff here, those are our egg whites. That's the albumin, um, mostly made up of water and protein. Um, I'll try and focus that a little better. There we go. Um, the yolk in the middle, of course, is going to be our food source for our developing chick. Um, off to the side, and you might notice these, there's like these little weird um, white stringy things that tend to come off of either side of the egg yolk. Um, those are chalazy, or sometimes more simply called twisters. We only see them in the bird eggs. We don't see them in reptile eggs because um, reptiles don't turn their eggs. Reptile parents lay their eggs and then they leave them. Um, bird parents stay with their eggs. And um, 
mother birds roll or father birds roll their eggs around regularly. If you've ever hatched eggs in an incubator, um, you might know that you either have to manually turn them um, or you have to put an egg turner in there so that they're always kind of getting jostled around. Um, so if you're a little baby chick developing in that egg and your mom's always kicking you around, um, you don't want to be tumbling everywhere. So those little twisters actually kind of make sure that the embryo stays up close to the mother's body to stay nice and warm and isn't constantly tumbling around inside of the egg as she's rolling it around. Now, if we, let's see if we can see that. On the surface of the egg yolk in here, we can see, I don't know whether you can see it there. Hang on. Let me try and flip this over. Okay. I rolled this egg around a little bit and now I got it. So you might notice right there, is this little white spot. Um, that little white spot <clears throat> is called the blastodisc. And that is where the little embryo would start to develop if this had been a fertilized egg. Now, even though these are from our chickens here at home, we do not have a rooster. So we know this is not a fertilized egg. Um, if it was fertilized, you might see there's like a little halo that will develop um, around that blastodisc. And then so, and it's not easy to see, but sometimes you can tell then if it's a fertilized egg, but we know ours isn't. But that would be the spot where the little embryo would start to develop if there was one. So those are some of the key parts of the egg. Again, this is an amniotic egg, um, a self-contained watertight um, egg that does not need to be laid in the water. Um, and it is going to be common into our reptiles our birds and our egg laying mammals. Um, and for your lab this week, I'm gonna have you guys um, uh, taking a closer look at some of these parts and comparing and contrasting reptile and bird eggs.